I tried to open this video by singing the, uh, the famous bard song from Skyrim, but it came out really badly and I don't want to subject all of you to that. Anyway, hello all the crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about Scribble. Alright, so I've already, uh, done a crash course overview of what Scribble is and what some of the more common methods that you might want to use are, such as, uh, dot wrap, dot align, dot origin, that sort of thing. Today we're going to be talking about the, uh, the typist system in Scribble. If you haven't seen the first two videos that I made on Scribble, like the first two recent videos that I made on Scribble, because I made a few a long time ago that are a little on the out-of-date side right now, I recommend going back and watching those because uh, I've, I've talked about what like an introduction to Scribble would be and some of the basic methods that you can call, call on objects are. And today we're going to be de dealing with the, uh, the typist system. So this is going to be what everyone likes to call typewriter text. All right, so the basic draw text scribble function that I introduced uh, early on does contain a value that allows you to automatically use a, um, like a character count that will automatically allow you to have text pop in as it's drawn. And that'll, uh, that'll work for simple usage. That'll probably get you pretty far if all you need is some simple text effects. But there is an entire, um, as I said, an entire typist system, uh, which is a... Uh, uh, quite advanced and can do a lot of things for you. So I'm going to start by saying var typist is going to be um, equal to scribble underscore typist. Again, uh, like the scribble object, uh, like the, the scribble function itself, this is not a constructor. No need to say new scribble typist because that really won't work very well. Uh, as you can see, if you hit F1 and go into this um, into this function, it, it just returns an internal struct, uh, like that. And, uh, you can call a few methods on the typist objects. Uh, the one that we are going to first concern ourselves with is going to be typist.in. And that is a method that, um, takes a few arguments. One is going to be the, I believe, the speed. This is going to be in characters per frame, so if you have, if you want one character to appear per frame, you would give the, uh, the speed argument a value of 1, and there is the smoothness. And the, smooth the smoothness value controls how characters fade in or don't fade in. If you give it a smoothness value of 0, then text, when it, um, when it appears on the screen, will not fade in. It'll just, the letters will pop into existence. If you give the smoothness argument a higher value, like 1, they will fade in, fade in smoothly. Uh, and then obviously you can you can have values in between that. You can have, if you really want text to fade in slowly, you can give it a, a higher value. I'm going to go with zero for now, and we will play with the values later. Uh, the third thing you need to do is pass a third argument into the scribble object draw method. And that is going to be the typist that we just created. So the typewriter controller, as I'll call it, I guess I'll call it typewriter controller because that's easy to understand. Uh, the typewriter controller and the scribble objects are separate. Uh, you can have a scribble object being drawn with settings from a different, from multiple different typewriter controllers if you really want to. I honestly can't think of many situations in which that would be the desirable course of action, but you do you. Uh, there's one problem with this code that I've just written, and that is that since the typist objects, the uh, the typewriter controller objects are separated from the uh, the scribble objects. The typist objects are not cached in the same way that the scribble objects are. So when we call this line in the draw event, every time the draw event runs 60 times per second, the, um, we're going to be creating a new typist object, and that typist object is going to have its, uh, its in method called. Uh, if I were to run the game now, we wouldn't see anything of interest happening. Uh, we're going to have sort of, sort of uh, one, one character sort of flickering in and out of, in and out of existence because we are uh, destroying and recreating the typist object every time. And if I were to, if I were to like freeze the game by grabbing the, uh, grabbing the title bar, uh, you can see that it kind of, kind of manages to pop out more than one, um, character of text before, before disappearing. But, uh, we really don't want that. That's really not helpful. So instead we are going to have to put this in the create event of the object that is controlling this. If you have a, uh, a persistent object that handles like cutscenes in your game, uh, Juju Adams chatterbox. Uh, library is a completely separate story, but you uh, you may consider using that for these purposes as well. Uh, we are going to need to make the uh, the typewriter controller an instance variable of the object that is controlling the uh, the text on the screen. Uh, for me, that's the player. I'm going to um, going to make this 
side by side with the draw event here. Uh, I mentioned in the last video that making the scribble objects themselves, you can put that in the create event if you wish, um, but you don't have to. So the uh, the type as objects, on the other hand, have to be defined in the create event. And now, if I were to run the game, we would see that we would be having text fading in uh, character by character. Oh, there once was a hero named Ragnar the Red, and so on and so forth. Okay, that's awesome. Um, if you want to, um, this will make the text typewriter in. I also said, I guess I would, I would show the smooth text setting, which can be can be kind of fun. So that's still pretty fast. Let me slow that down. Let me make this more like um, port four characters per per step, and let's give it a smoothness value of like two. And you can see it fading in very nicely like that. I think I'll leave it like that actually. I kind of like those that speed and uh, and fade setting. It's not too slow. It's also not too fast. So this is making the text fade in. If you wanted to make your text fade out, for example, if Let's make this keyboard check pressed. Uh, we could use the typist, we could call the typist dot um, out method, and this is gonna take the same the same parameters. Let's make that a uh, speed of 0 0.4 and a smoothness value of two. Um, I, uh, I'd like to, I'd like to go out of my way to use the self uh, keyword scope specifier reference. Uh, if we hit the enter key, we are going to have the typewriter text fading out instead of fading in. And you can see that if I uh, if I hit the enter key before it finishes fading in, it will automatically like have it appear in full before it starts fading out. Um, if I were to wait patiently for the text to finish appearing, uh, it would uh, it would just fade out. It would just fade out from the from the start. All right, this is this now feels a little bit on the slow side. Maybe I should have made it faster. Anyway, goodbye text. And we could uh, we could have a, a bit of a back and forth going with I don't know the space bar and the enter key um, having text appear and disappear if we would like no stop that that's not wait stop that's gonna crash try it like this all right that's fun so we can have the text fade in fade out rather we can have the text fade in we can have it go back and forth in a, in a tug of war between appearing and disappearing. If you were to um, if you were to try and, and have text fade in that's already faded in, it wouldn't do anything, it wouldn't restart. Um, there is a third method. What's my uh, what's my my next key on the keyboard that I'm gonna go after today? Let's say if we're to hit the tab key. Tab, enter, and space are the ones that I always go for when I when I want to demo something happening. But there is, uh, I believe the method is called skip, and we can call it the skip method. On a um, on a typist object, and this will cause the text to just instantly fade into its whatever its state is going to be. Um, we can have it instantly fade in like that. If I were to have the text fade out and hit the tab key and call the skip method, it would instantly fade out. Hello. Okay, so that's some basic typist stuff. Do I want to commit this change here? I'll commit that change. Just why not? So there are a few uh, text formatting tags that you can use that will um, that will affect the uh, the typewriter setting. So you could use, for example, if you wanted to insert a bit of a break between the two uh, the two lines of this poem, you could use the delay tag, and this is a uh, a formatting tag that has a parameter. This ha also it, the delay tag is going to come with a second argument. Um, that is the duration of the delay in milliseconds. So if I wanted to delay the typewriter effect for one second, I could enter delay comma 1000 in square brackets like this. And this will insert a 1000 millisecond delay, uh, otherwise known as one second. And this will cause the typewriter to have a bit of a brief pause in between lines of the song. All right, it's coming riding from White Room from Old Rourke's Dead, pause, and then continues on its way. I think I deleted the space that used to be there. Uh, you could also, if you want, you could have a um, a speed factor. Um, where would be a good place to speed up the uh, the text? Let's say uh, old Rorikstead. Instead of having that colored, we can have a speed factor of um, 
something like 0 0.25 and that will cause these two words to um, to appear at a quarter of the speed of the uh, the rest of the typewriter settings. Okay, so this is uh, this is the default speed, and this is the slow speed, and there's the delay, and then it continues on its way. All right, if you're a fan of Pokemon Black and White, you may recall a character named uh, N. It's a very very hard name to remember. I know it's a single letter. And uh, if you uh, if you paid close attention, you may have noticed that his um, his dialogue when it appeared on the screen actually appeared at um, a faster speed than everyone else's dialogue, uh, regardless of the game's text speed setting. And if I recall, uh, occasionally in the game, some of the other characters would actually like remark on that, saying, "Boy, do you talk fast." And I always thought that was a cool little attention to detail. If you wanted to do something like that, you could have a uh, you could use the speed. Um, scribble tag to um, to emulate that effect. If you wanted to have an NPC that was based on me, uh, you might instead have something like speed comma 10, because I just talk way too fast. And lastly, of the uh, of the formatting tags that are of interest to us, uh, there is also a command that is pause. And this will, this will pause the typewriter effect indefinitely, unlike delay, which will only pause it for a certain period of time. And then uh, you could check to see if uh, the user presses a key, keyboard, check, pressed. Um, what's a key that I haven't used yet? You have the shift key, you could say self.typist.unpause. And this will allow the text to continue if it is paused by one of the, uh, the pause formatting tags up there. Uh, there is also a helpful .get paused method which will uh, which will inform you true or false boolean is the typist per, uh, currently paused on account of a formatting tag. Alright, so if I were to run the game now, and if I were to let the text scroll in, old Rorikstead, the, uh, the text is going to pause after that, it's not going to go anywhere until I hit the shift key and then it's going to keep going. Alright, that could be a useful hit A to continue sort of sort of mechanism um, that seems to be falling out of favor in the modern day but if you uh, if you want to do that you can insert a pause in a in the middle of a line using that feature if you want to get the state of a typewriter uh, there's a few methods you can use I've already talked about dot get pause uh, there's a few others like uh, like dot get skip which will inform you if text has been skipped to the uh, to its final final position. Uh, there's also dot get state that you can use. So if you were to say, um, uh, let's say var typewriter state is going to be equal to self dot typist dot get state. Uh, this will return a number between zero and two. Uh, zero will mean that the text has not started to fade in yet. So you've had your text, you've had your typewriter call the dot in method, but it hasn't started to appear yet. Uh, one will, will mean that the text has 100% faded in and all of it's on display on the screen. And two will mean that the text has 100% faded out and that, that it's not there anymore. And anything in between that will determine, will, will tell you how much of the text has appeared. Um, if I were to draw text on the screen, what's a, uh, what's a place on the screen that isn't like occupied by something else? Let's say, let's just draw some regular text at, on the screen at like 32. I want to say uh, there's that heart icon at the top at like uh, 3264 or so and the text can be type writer state and if I were to run this now we would see that uh, when the text fades in it's gonna start at zero it's gonna go to one Boy, that's really slow into a crawl. I should have set the speed multiplier to like, um, like three x instead of instead of a quarter x. And when it um, when it gets to the end, typewriter state has a value of one. If I were to have that fade out, which key is that? Enter. Uh, if I were to have that fade out, we see the typewriter state is going from one in the direction of um, in the direction of two. Uh, notice that it also, when fading out, ignored the, uh, the pause command. Alright, there's only a couple of other things I want to talk about in this video. There's a number of things in Scribble that I, that exists that I will not be talking about just because, just in the interest of time because there's so much of it. 
And if you want to look through the documentation to see some of the more uh, the more obscure things that you can do with this with these systems, uh, by all means go ahead. I'm sure you'll find something interesting. But typist.ease is another method, and this will control how characters appear when they fade in. Uh, by default, you probably have seen that they just fade in, they, they sort of alpha blend. This method is going to take a few arguments. One is going to be the easing method, so if you type scribble ease dot control space, there should be uh, members of this enum. And... Game Maker, not gonna, not gonna give me code help here. Hey. There should be. I guess it's not doing it. It's not gonna show me what uh, what the members of Scribble underscore E's are. Anyway, uh, you could uh, these are basic easing curves. So linear is linear easing. Quadratic is quadratic easing. Um, start uh, start slow and fast. Cubic, quartic, quintic, sine, exponential, circular, uh, in and out, back, elastic, bounce. Uh, those are all popular easing curves. If you go to easings.net. Uh, you could see what those look like on a uh, on a graph. Uh, what would be a fun one? I've always been partial to circular easing myself, so let's go with that. Uh, the next two arguments are going to be uh, related to the uh, the position of characters as they start to fade in, uh, where they start to fade in from relative to their final position. So if you were to give this um, give these next two arguments an x value of, say, 0 and a y value of, say, negative 12. Uh, this would cause the characters to appear to drop in from above. You'll see what I mean by that when I, uh, when I run the game. Uh, the next are going to be the scale arguments. These are going to be the, um, the starting scale of the characters relative to their final size. So if you wanted characters to appear to, uh, to grow in place, uh, you could give those arguments of 0 and 0 for x scale and y scale. I'll, um, I'll break this up into multiple lines so that you can see which arguments are related to each other. Uh, this is going to cause ca uh, characters as they fade in to appear to uh, sort of pop into existence, like grow into existence. Uh, rotation. This is uh, characters can rotate as they fade in, as they transition in. Uh, if you wanted to have characters rotate in, from an angle of, say, upside down, you could give that an argument of 180 for 180 degrees. And alpha duration. By default, this is going to be 1. Uh, a duration of 1 means that characters will take 100% of the transition time to, um, to fade in. Uh, a value of 0 will mean that regardless of what this transition time is, uh, characters will not like alpha fade. They will just uh, appear at their, at their full transparency. I'm going to leave that at 1. Uh, let's run the game now. This should look interesting indeed. All right, it's going a little bit too fast for my liking. Let's, uh, let's decrease the speed so that we can really see each character, and let's increase the duration to something like 5 so that we can really see them moving. All right, so you see them rotating into place. Uh, they're, they're also dropping in from above, and it's also moving very slowly and also alpha blending. Um, Let's see. Can I can I set this to zero, and then we'll be able to see more fully the uh, the rotation and scaling elements. So you can see them growing. You can see them rotating in, and they're uh, they're no longer fading. So it's easier to see what's happening here. Okay. How slow is it going to go when it gets to old Rourke's stead? Because this is this is very slow indeed. Oh Jesus, that's slow. Okay, don't do that to your players. So uh, you can play around with this. Uh, if you wanted to have characters shrink into place instead of let's let's give them an initial scale of like five x and let's let's have the uh, let's have them drop in from a greater height like from fifty units above and now they're also going to alpha blend. Uh, this is going to look even stranger. Oh yes, perfect. This this reminds me of like two thousand ten era YouTube Windows Movie Maker title cards. Good times. So there's a few other fun things you can do. Uh, just to give you some ideas, you can say typist.typist.character delay and uh, character delay add rather, and you can use this to add a a small delay on every instance of a character in a string. So if you wanted to, for example, uh, automatically have in your text, I'm looking for something that would actually be useful to have. Uh, one, let's get rid of the speed modifier because that's really starting to drive me crazy. Um, but instead of inserting a manual pause, 
uh, after the exclamation mark. Maybe you want typist to automatically pause for a certain duration of time after every exclamation mark that it comes across. And this would allow you to... Uh, this would allow you to add a manual... It, I'm suddenly having a hard time with manual versus automatic. This would allow you to add a, an automatic delay uh, on every exclamation mark in the string. So right now there are two of them. There's, uh, there's one after Rorikstead and then there's one uh, after the, uh, the end of the last line but before the little tilde over there. If I wanted to add another one, um, say after Ragnar's name, as if you're shouting in excitement. Um, if I were to run the game now, you would see that every time we hit an exclamation mark in the text, uh, scribble allow alpha, uh, allow glyph data getter to be true. Okay, so I need to do a little bit of config. I was hoping to avoid, um, to avoid talking about the config settings in scribble, uh, before either just like probably a last miscellaneous video that I make on scribble featuring the different, uh, settings that I can use or alternatively just encouraging people to go and play around with these yourself. But I guess um, the system has other ideas. So we can we can just set this to set that macro to true and uh, be on our way. So we're fading in and we still have the ridiculous like easing transition. But the important part is that you can see that there's a pause after the after the exclamation mark. I am going to comment this out because that is actually like I'm having a hard time taking it seriously now. Let's go back to the original settings. Okay. Yeah, the, um, there's the pause. All right, it's gonna continue. Another pause. And it's gonna read out the last line and before it gets to the tilde, there we go. So that's a, that's a character delay. And you can also uh, character delay remove if you decide that you, uh, you no longer want that to happen. Yeah, if you if you want to play around with these scribble configuration settings, there is an entire, I believe, multiple uh, code files at this point that you can look inside that will uh, determine the behavior of scribble, such as um, like whether or not color uh, sprites should be uh, have their color blended by default or uh, things related to. I believe there is a, a bunch of settings related to like animation, like the rainbow text effect uh, animation and that sort of thing. Uh, there's a bunch of you can add default you can add different colors to uh, to scribble if you want to use something besides like the built-in 17 game maker colors uh, you can define your own colors for scribble down here it's a lot of fun uh, here's the animation controls default color default wave size default like rainbow speed that sort of thing but we're talking about typist here uh, there's a, a related function, a related method for uh, typist classes, for the typist uh, instances, that is dot, what is it, sound. And I'm going to force myself to do a little bit of extra work when editing this video because I'm going to suddenly introduce audio into this. The, uh, the sc underscore coin sound effect. Hey. That's a little, a little ding that in the, uh, the default sample project played whenever you talk to a, uh, talk to one of these doggo guys. But instead, I'm going to repurpose it to uh, play as the uh, the text appears on the screen via the typist. Um, the first argument is going to be an array of sounds, sc underscore coin, in an array. Uh, this has to be an array. If you have multiple sounds that you want to play as the text appears, you could um, you could have an array containing multiple sound um, sound assets. But I only have the one, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna um, include the one there. Uh, there's going to be an argument for whether or not sounds can overlap. I am going to set this to false. Uh, for the sake of your sanity, I recommend that you set it to false as well. Otherwise, you will have a sound effect playing every single time a character appears on the screen, which is probably going to be once per once per frame or close to it, and that will quickly become a lot of sound effects that you probably don't want to hear. Next, there is uh, two values for the minimum pitch and maximum pitch. Uh, if you want, if you don't want the sound effects to be randomly pitched up or down as they appear, as the text appears on the screen, you could just set them both to one. I don't know. Does this uh, does this take optional arguments? Uh, sound. Okay, so we do not have optional arguments here. I uh, I might make a request to Juju to enable optional arguments 
for like one and one to these. Because I feel like that's what most people are would uh would set those to, but nevertheless, for demonstration purposes, this is fine. Uh this will cause as I run the game the coin sound effect. Where where is there Oh. I have a habit of doing that. Uh, this will cause the coin sound effect to play. And <laughs> when it started, not so much after the, after the delay. After that, it just sounded like garbage. But when uh, when the text started appearing, it was uh, it was playing at more or less the same uh, the same tempo as the as the song in the background, which I thought was funny. Okay, um, if you want to randomly pitch sounds up or down. As they appear, you can play with the pitch arguments. Uh, this is maybe... Oh god, that sounds awful. This is something that maybe is better in theory than in practice, but hey, if you really want to... <laughs> Jesus. If you if you really want to have your your players uh, auditarily bamboozled, uh, you're, uh, you're allowed to do that. And I'm certainly not going to stop you. Alright, I think that's a fairly humorous place to leave it off. How long have I been going for? About 40 minutes. Alright, I hope I can get this under a half hour. Again, there's uh, there's more to do with um, with Scribble. There's more to do with the Scribble Typist settings that you could use in your game. There's an entire like subsystem of the, of the Typist system that pertains to uh, running events on certain characters. I believe you can also... Um, when it comes to the event system, you can like define them in the string, such as with with these special tags, uh, with the formatting tags, or you can also attach them to um, to characters or things like that. But I could also spend a very long time on that, and I really don't want to make this video like way longer than it has to be. So I think I'm going to save that for later. Again, if you want the uh, the written documentation, I will have that linked in the description of this video. So you know, before I uh. Before I commit these changes, let me actually include the, the easing code, because that's... It looks stupid, but it's also, like, it gets the point across of what you can, of what you can do with this. Alright. Uh, let me, uh... Alright, if you want the code for this, uh, look for the GitHub repository down in the description of this video. Uh, specifically, it's gonna be on a... It's gonna be on the scribble-typist branch of the repository. Uh, it's gonna be part of the... Um, the original Scribble, like, demo project that I had. I don't think I'm gonna merge it into the main branch when I'm done, the way I did with some of the other, like, multi-video series. But, it's gonna be there. Anyway, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this, and one Let's Make a Game, currently Bullet Hell. I like to talk about some of the weirder things that you can do in Game Maker, particularly 3D and shader stuff, but... particularly 3D and shader stuff, but I do cover other things from time to time. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, look for the links to that in all the usual places. You could see some fun things like your name in the credits at the end of every video. Uh, about once a month I post a preview of my future plans. And if you wanted to pledge, I definitely would appreciate it. Otherwise, I hope you found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Then Nothing Happened, Square Crow, Sindra Larson, Posho, Gunnar Clovis, Game Maker, Edward Holt, DJ Gibbles and Army Armbruster for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end like this, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.